Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friend Sam Clement and Courtney Trosh. Y'all say hello. How's it going? Hey, John. Hey, guys. You know, here we are in the middle of the summertime, 2023. Frankly, the economic data has been a little bit boring. I think Sam can attest to that. Yep. Earnings have been, yeah, mostly so so. Good enough. Good enough. And really, just taking a look at the business news, taking a look at the market news, you could understand why people perhaps would be a little bit bored during the summertime. Reason why they call it the dog days of summer, Sam and Courtney, however, this year something is a little bit different. It is about as hot as I can ever remember it. I mean, absolutely boiling outside, at least here in central Alabama. However, when I look around, take a look at news, uh, news media from literally around the world, it seems like the entire world, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, is having one of the hottest summers on record, if not the hottest summer on record. And it kind of makes you wonder, Huh, I wonder if there really is some to some of this climate change, and if so, is there anything we can do about it? Well, you're right that they're saying it's the hottest on record, and I thought that was so funny in all the headlines. I said it said it's the it's 120,000 years, said, according to some people. Yeah, like well, that. and then they go, oh, well, we've only been keeping data since the 70s. I was like, yeah, I don't know if that really counts as the, the hottest days. And, but you're right. I mean, everywhere it's just extremely hot. I saw even at the Persian Gulf Airport in Iran, heat index was over 150 degrees. What? Yes. 152 degrees. Well, and I was looking at that, too, from a CNN article. It had the temperature in Baghdad as 122 degrees like Fahrenheit that, that's not even not even the heat index that is 122 degrees like I cannot wrap my mind around how hot that is I mean it's 122 degrees which frankly would be my wife's preferred temperature on the thermostat if you catch my drift <laughs> it can be 110 heat index heat index outside I come in the house is set on 74 degrees 75 degrees that's no air moving and she comes in she'll go I'm freezing I've got to go outside and so this happens routinely every night. I'm, meanwhile, I'm sweating. I, I mean, I'm just absolutely, just absolutely nuts. And I guess it affects different people differently. I will tell you, you know, how I'm coping with the heat. Man, I'm trying to crank it. When best not looking, I'm trying to crank that thermostat down. What is your, like, preferred temperature at your house? About 62 degrees. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're, you're no, uh, air no. conditioning units working overtime. You know, the thing is, my wife is a very cold-natured person. I made the mistake of saying she was cold-blooded one time at a, at a, at a cocktail party. That went over very poorly, Sam. I, I, As I, I'm I, sure I that said, comment again um, will go over uh, really yeah, well. <laughs> well, she has to listen to this first. Um, I would tell you, this is what happens when I go out of town on business. Stay at a hotel, and what I do is I get that bad boy thermostat down as low as it will go. And so that way, at least my body can regulate for one night, feel good about it, so I can go back. You know, Beth told me one time in terms of how we keep the house, you've got to be warm for the boil. And that's absolute truth. So my preferred temperature, if I, if I had to set it on something for a year round, would be 70 degrees. That's what we do, 70. I would say 68 um, to 70 is my preferred temperature yeah, so I mean but, but I grew up with it being a little bit colder so I think to your point like I would much rather be cold because you can typically put on more clothes yes. but you can only take off so much right? this is a, this is a P, PG podcast I'm, Courtney I appreciate I'm, hey, right I'm that. just stating <laughs> the facts <laughs> you've got four children at the house be careful what, what you're doing <laughs> yeah. in, any, in any event is there anything Sam that you're doing during this hottest of heat waves absolutely hottest of heat waves, anything you and Hannah are doing differently in order to stay cool? I wouldn't say so. I think I may kind of go against the grain a little. I feel like I'm outside more. Really? I like the heat. Okay. How about you, Courtney? No, I feel like I'm sweating all the time because <laughs> it's so hot. Uh, so I would say definitely indoors more being aware of water intake making no. sure that myself and the children are staying hydrated but alex it doesn't um, matter. no he can take care of himself yeah. um but i think being more aware of it and you can even see it you know i don't know if y'all have ever had heat exhaustion but just the fact of like for our family like everyone you know the bright red face and it's like you know they start getting sluggish and um you know reading reports that people are literally I mean you know dying in their homes and having the paramedics being called for people who are having heat exhaustion it's just it's really it, sad it's something you see a lot in areas where people aren't used to the yeah. heat necessarily like that don't have like air I, conditioning I, I don't even remember the year is pre-2000 but um there was a summer in chicago that there was just a crazy heat yeah. wave and tons of people died unfortunately and so i think that's where you see that mostly is in the areas that aren't really used to it people down here are at least well, you're right about that, and there are different ways of staying cool. 
personally for me, I'm having a hard time uh, staying cool. And that's why, and as you guys know this, the thermostat to this end of the hall is in my office. And so, uh, Courtney will know this sitting next to me. Yep. I keep it kind of cool. Uh, and so that's the one, one, one of the ways I do it. I personally don't uh, cut the check in order to pay for the utilities in, in this building. So there you have it. So really, what can you do when it's that hot? But it does beg the question, and this is where we can delve off into a little bit. And please remember, anything that we say here is not necessarily the official opinion of Oakworth Capital Bank and all that good stuff. Is this heat wave? And are the weird temperatures that we've, we've seen thus far this summer, is it just kind of mere happenstance? I mean, an El Nino effect that's too long over in the Pacific Ocean, or is it something along the lines of something far more sinister, uh, sort of, you know, the, the end is coming sort of change to climate change? Um, what do you all think? Well, I do think it's also more than just the heat. I mean, the heat is the culprit, but you're looking at historical flooding because everything is so dry that when it is raining it has nowhere to be absorbed so it's creating mudslides and it's just and running straight off it's running straight off and then you also see wildfires which have gone crazy and then to your point the power grid and the sense that more people are using more air conditioning people are getting air conditioning that maybe we didn't previously have it so it's putting more of a strain um, and then you're having blackouts because we can't produce enough power so i know i'm not answering your question i'm kind of kind of adding to it i don't know john and i haven't looked into that as i'm looking at articles in front of me that hasn't been one of the topics that i touched but i can tell you back in my day of college i did a research day of college yeah back in the day only yeah. a few years ago um <laughs> i did a whole research project on hurricanes and the strength of hurricanes and whether or not that was due to global warming and what i found <laughs> in my research which it's not um, published in any, you know, um, science magazine. <laughs> you did it, you did it I couldn't get it published. <laughs> Strangely um, enough. But it was saying that... <laughs> Do you remember the grade you got on it? I think I did pretty well. I don't know. Um, I, I, I mean, that means less than an A, Sam. Yeah, I think it was like a B. I think I got a B. But it basically was saying that global warming wasn't creating necessarily um, more hurricanes, but it was creating more intense. So I don't know. So if I go with that theory... I would think that it's not that it's creating, like, it's just going to be hotter and hotter and hotter. I think it's making these natural years of a little bit being warmer more intense than it would. I don't think it's indicative of it being hot all the time forever and ever and ever, if that makes sense. What about you, Sam? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, I think I'm still more concerned about, I mean, 20, 10, 20 times the amount of people that die from heat-related um, you know, causes is caused by cold air, by cold temperatures. It's still much more dangerous. I think there's bigger fish to fry than worrying about having it be hot in the summer. Personally, well, do you think though? Do you think, however, these hotter temperatures and as Courtney alluded to, the more the greater severity or seemingly so of some of these some of these storms that this is uh, due to um, significant climate change? And if so, what can mankind or humankind do to combat this, if anything? Well, no, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think, um, you know, the most deadly, first of all, and a lot of the most powerful ones are from pre-1980 at least. Um, and so I don't know if I necessarily agree with the opinion of uh, hurricanes getting much worse. Well, Courtney, in her, in her, in her yep. thesis, well, that made you haven't read my paper, a Sam, C plus so back yeah. in the day. Hey, pass, no, pass it was a B. Plus. 50, okay. you keep 15 years or 15 my, plus years ago. No. <laughs> back before the internet. Now I'm going to have to find it. <laughs> it's back also, before the internet. Also, though, it seems like a lot of the people championing that um, global warming is causing you know, waters to rise significantly are also buying up a bunch of really awesome beach houses. Do you think so? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, how about that? Why do you think that is? Oh, they're just talking their book or the other side of it. I guess they have a really good insurance. I think so. But like, even if you but don't still, believe, even if you don't believe, so I guess to that point, like you're still looking at our resources. More people are having to call 911 or call, you know, the fire station because they've, gotten trapped or are having heat exhaustion there was several stories of people who have um, died or are needing to use kind of our, our resources so there's more strain on the system in the power grid and all of that so even if you don't think that we should do anything from a um, like passing a bill about having allowing states to have a state of emergency for like heat 
um, extreme heat. I mean, what do you say about the fact that like our grid is not able to support the the demand? Well, I, 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 would, I would say more natural gas and uh, dead dinosaurs out of the ground. Well, I mean, that's it, it, I was going to say something vaguely similar or somewhat related. The fact that if we can't even take care of our electrical grid now, right? What are we going to do when all of a sudden all these cars have to be electronic vehicles? All of our appliances have to be electronic or electric. I say electronic, electric vehicles. All that stuff. That's just we're just not going to be able to do it in a lot of ways. And so when I take a look at all this and take a look at this of all this heat, I'm kind of in between the two extremes when it comes to climate change. I think Sam, you and I've talked about before. I don't think there's any way the seven to eight billion human beings walking around the earth that need to be clothed, fed, shod, and housed, that that's not going to have a negative impact on the environment in some form or fashion. However, conversely, if I'm not mistaken, all the CO2 that those forest fires up in Canada have let off is, I mean, probably dwarfs anything that we can do here in the United States in order to save that amount of CO2. And I could say that poor land management skills out in federal lands, out, out in the western portion of our country, where we have drier temperatures, lead to far more environmental degradation, whether or not I'm driving my Volkswagen up and down the roads. Sam, your thoughts? I, I think you're kind of on to something. I mean, whether whatever it's caused by and temperatures getting warmer, and I'd even kind of debate that maybe a little bit, but. I think that's not necessarily the point. Well, of you're the like the guy likes to go outside in 110. Yeah, I don't yeah. Mind it. I, th- I mean, like I said, many more people die of uh, too cold of temperature compared to too hot of temperature. So we maybe save some more lives if we got the plane a little warmer. <laughs> I do find it interesting, John, because you made a point. You said that we have almost 8 billion people on the, in the, on the world. No one's going to know for what sure. I mean, okay. do, you, do you think New Delhi knows how many people are walking around? There, there's countries with a guesstimate that goes from 10 million to 50 million. They yeah. could be off by 40 million I mean, people. no way, country. no way you could even know how many people live in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Okay. But sure, let's say, let's okay, go with 8 billion. Okay, let's go with 8 billion. Okay, so the whole thing is that we've talked before on podcast about how we're seeing a decline in birth rates and how we need that to be increased so that we can support the existing lives or the aging population, right? The Asian so, population. No, aging population. That's, that's more financial gimmicks, why we need more people. <laughs> right. But like from this perspective, would you not say that we need less people? Uh, well, Kamal Harris actually said that this past week to hopefully reduce our population. Malthusians. Uh, so how them. is she um, proposing we do that? <laughs> I'm afraid to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you she won't be uh, she won't be volunteering to go first. That's the way it is with with people. Uh, tri- yeah. <laughs> I would tell you this, Courtney. Those numbers that you see in terms of population, that's generally generally in sort of the first and what people would have called the second uh, second world. You still have massive population gains in the subcontinents. Uh, and in Africa, global, uh, south, global south for all intents and purposes, some some exceptions in, in Latin America. So all those population declines are in those wealthier countries, uh, but we're still seeing large numbers of, of, of births really in, in the global south. So And that is where those people, and then unfortunately it's kind of upside down in this regard, that's in the poorer areas where people actually want to aspire to a lifestyle which we enjoy here in the United States and all of those people will be will be forced to form to to consume natural resources in a far less efficient manner than what we have in the developed world so that could lead to actually even greater environmental degradation degradation than it would be if the population growth rates were high in Canada or elsewhere I am so much fun at a cocktail party you really are um, it is, it's it's amazing I got married Yep. She took it off the market early, didn't she? (laughs) Um, One thing, you know, when we talk about being reactive, and I know Sam would just say, suck it up, enjoy the heat, get out of your house. Um, But in looking at, okay, what areas are making, you know, changes, I did look to see that uh, Miami Miami. County. Yes. So on Tuesday, the Board of Commissioners unanimously passed an ordinance that gives workers the right to take a 10-minute break to drink water and rest 
in the shade every two hours if the heat index is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 93? No, 90. Just 90. 90. Yeah. So every day? Every day. You get 20, day. 20 minutes to go If you're working outside. If you're working uh, outside. If you're working outside? Yes. Should I need a water break. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. It's a... Whew. 90 degrees. So every two hours. I need, I need yeah. to go sit underneath this shade tree with my water bottle and my vape pen <laughs> <laughs> and cool off. Well, they, the, if the businesses <laughs> don't comply and are turned in, they could um, face up to a $3,000 violation per, per incident. What do you think about that, Courtney? Well, these are people who work outside. Correct. I think it's a so little... So it doesn't have done, it's not office workers. Right. Right. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, I need a I mean, break. Yeah. yeah I can Every imagine. two hours, uh, Sam's yeah. alarm on his watch goes off and says, hey, John. I know, that's true. <laughs> that's where the business was done during the smoke breaks. That's right. Um, no, I think that, uh, I, I think it's very reactive. I, I feel like people in this day and age expect immediate response to, hey, we're having a problem. What are you going to do about it? And, and that's their response to that. I would agree wholeheartedly. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's uh, businesses, local governments, or federal governments. It's, something's got to get done. I don't care what it is. Something's got to get done. And so that's why we have, in my estimation, my estimation alone, we have a lot of pronouncements coming out of Washington, which I don't think have necessarily been completely thought through for their economic ramifications or whether or not they're even possible to attain. Uh, and so I think well, you'll see that really across the board. It's not important that, that, that what we do is the right thing to do. We just have to do something. And that's a huge part of the mindset, I think, of a lot of people in leadership. And they just want to show that, hey, I'm, I'm listening I to you. I did something. Yeah, well, I mean, would you agree or disagree with that, oh, Sam? It's hard, hard to disagree with that. How about you, Courtney? Would you agree or disagree with that? Understand that you used to work in, in the belly of the beast up in Washington. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a fine line, and it does seem that it's very reactive. Obviously, I was the one who said that initially, but I think that you can't overanalyze something so much that nothing gets done, and we we know what it's like. It's an analysis, a paralysis by analysis. I think yes, is what it's called. and so I do think there's there's something there's somewhere to meet in the middle. Is this the topic that they really had to come up with something to? But because they had people constantly passing out while working outside, I don't know. But, um, you know, if it shows that they're doing something. That, so I, I think that there is some probably somewhere in the middle that is Well, the thing best. about it is if, if you're some <laughs> worker that continues working in the heat until you, you collapse, I haven't met too many of those. Get a raise for doing that. Well, yeah, it's a good work a ethic. It's work a, ethic. five yeah. core values. Yeah. I mean, think about us, having done outside labor, you know, back when I was growing up, high school and all that stuff, high school and college, I don't believe I ever worked with anyone that had such a work ethic that they were going to work until they passed out. However, if you gave them an additional 20 minutes to go have a smoke, you know, uh, choke down, choke down a glass of water. They would be all too happy to do that. Matter of fact, yeah, they might pay for that. You know, matter, they, I absolutely need matter, matter of fact, Courtney, they might take you up on that every hour as opposed to waiting every other hour. Yep. How about you? When you were when you were working at the shoe store, doing all the stuff that you did when you were growing up, did you know people with such work ethics that they would they would collapse on the job as opposed to sitting underneath the shade tree? No, I did not. But I've I, I've actually never been employed anywhere in which I was outside. I've always been in air conditioning. Have it so nice. Yeah, that's explain, that actually explains a lot. I know. You know, so many people are like lifeguards, and so I never was interested in that. So <laughs> I like so, the air conditioning. So what do you think? What do you think our government could or should do in regards and in response to these blistering temperatures? Is it even a role of the central government to do anything about it? And can central governments, by and large? really impact, whatever the edicts are, really impact global climate change to any degree. Sam, I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, let Sam well, go with that one. You know, I think Again, these are Sam's opinions. Not necessarily yeah. those are <laughs> the I think clearly countries are putting things into the environment that are not good for it and no. not good for people. I don't think that's necessarily... Like when factories are making clouds? Yeah. 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 I mean, it doesn't take a doom, but science degree to understand that some of that stuff is probably not good for people on the planet but I think you have to be a little more focused on where the problems actually are and you know U.S. emissions what's where those have gone over the last couple decades versus you know developing countries like uh, China and India that are continuing to pollute more and more and 
but it's also a little hypocritical. We've gotten to the point by doing that that we were able to do this stuff. And so to tell these countries that do not have anywhere close to the living standard that we do, that we did it and we got through it and now we don't have to as much, but you need to follow our rules without the right. same kind of benefit. Well, that's, that's part of the problem between the global north and the global south. Yeah, we're trying to, uh, you know, some of these countries are, are hundreds of years behind in terms of economic development. Mm-hmm. Uh, having their revolution, you know, industrial revolutions or something of that sort. Now, yeah. we did that hundreds of years ago. Yeah, it's kind of like going to a good chunk of sub-Saharan Africa, uh, even a good chunk of Southeast Asia. The stands for for all intents and purposes, Central Asia, and saying, guys, do as I say, not as I did, and not as I currently do. Mm-hmm. Right. How does that go over? Probably not well. No, I, I think I've been over there, but I think I think that would suck. It doesn't go over well. All right, Courtney, what do you think? Do you think central governments have the should have the authority, power to to do the, to make changes in our life in our lifestyles in order to combat climate change? Although it's kind of difficult to see what driving an e what your one person driving an EV is going to do to change change environmental disaster. Right. I mean, I, I do um, see Sam's point of view, and I would agree with that wow. somewhat. All right. And with but, that, thank you all so much for that. <laughs> yeah. I will say, I, I think that being environmentally conscious, it, just to kind of reiterate what Sam was saying, is specific to the fact that um, you have the means to be conscious of it. Most people have to say, you know what, I can't care that this is organic or this because I've got to feed my family or I've got to put gas in the car. I've got to, I don't care if this, this car has, ex- I got to get to work. And I feel like, you know, we're getting to that with inflation and stuff that um, it's a bigger conversation than just, you know, I got to stay alive myself, let alone worry about the birds and, and the trees and all, all that. Right. And so. that, that's where kind of going back to what Sam said, and I hear exactly what you're saying. We feel we have the luxury in the United States to say, if we drive an EV or we, I mean, better, better right. yet, probably a little bit more realistic, maybe forcing us to drive Priuses or hybrids or something like that. That would actually be probably more environmentally friendly because we wouldn't have to mine as many rare earths and lithiums and all that stuff. Sam, we can talk about that later on. Yeah. But um, but to, to sit there and say, this is what we need to do here in order to do it, understand that in places like India, I think cars per thousand are 50 cars per 1,000 people compared to 800 here in the United States. It's something like 200, uh, 230 cars per, 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 per thousand people in Mexico and, and so on and so forth. You have a huge chunk of the remainder of the world would love to have the problem where we have to scale down to a, to a Prius right. or you know you have to have a meatless Friday. These people aspire to having our standard of living and so we can we can constrain ourselves economically in the united states but how do we constrain the remainder of the world in order to keep co2 methane levels down and i'm not exactly sure anyone has a good answer for that i don't think so if we did we'd be running the world if we did we would no one would be listening to that this podcast right now maybe yeah that's yeah. true that's all right all right guys thank you all so much we always love to hear from you all so if you have any comments or questions please by all means let us know you can always drop us a line at trade perspectives at oakworth.com or you can leave us a review on the podcast out of your choice as always if you're interested in reading more or hearing more of what we have to say or how we think you can always go to oakworth.com take a look underneath the thought leadership tab and find all kinds of exciting information including links to previous podcasts, as well as links to some of our published materials, including Common Sense, which comes out weekly, and our Macro and Market uh, magazine, which comes out on a quarterly basis. With that, I'm going to give you guys last chance to say something on this topic. That's all I got. That's it, John. That's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.